house closed, and I I think I did, but I was probably shooting a little too high. Oh my gosh. And that's what resulted. That was the bathroom tour. All right, we've been having problems with our small generator trying to get it to start and it is not getting any spark. I've tried a few things. I've tried to put a new spark plug in first. I've tried to disconnect the low oil shutoff switch and I've tried to test the coil and I'm still not having any luck. We had to bring it into the tool repair place and I'm gonna bring it in there and see what they say. All right, so the days are starting to get a lot longer and we decided it was time to pick up some blinds for the cabin. So we put one curtain up or shade up out of all five. We have five windows minus the window on our front door. And that is because when we measured, we didn't take the exact right measurements. We were off by half an inch, so they don't fit. <laughs> so long story short, we have to head back to the Home Depot or um, Lowe's to get the right sizes, which is okay because we're gonna pick up our generator anyways, but take the right measurements and you won't end up in that situation. But we really like them. We went with the blinds that do a 40% light blocking so they're not in, um, the, like the higher ones that block out all the light so we think this is gonna be enough for the summertime when it's light even in the middle of the night I don't think we're gonna really care that much um, those were a little more expensive so we went with these and we're really happy we like them a while back we made our birch table and we are now ready to put a coating on it so I researched a few natural coatings and we opted to do a beeswax and olive oil coating we're just trying to stay away from anything store-bought that basically has ingredients that we don't really want on a food table. So we have beeswax handy. We use it for soap making. It's pretty easy to find it in the little chunks or get it online. This is already kind of broken up. So the ratio we're going to use is one to four. So one being the beeswax and four being the olive oil. If the ratio is not perfect, I wouldn't worry about it. There's lots of different recipes online and I'm just going for what kind of consistency we're looking for. Okay, so this is already all ready. It didn't take very long at all. We've let it cool for a little and what I'm gonna do is pour it into this jar. We tried to make just enough for today. I'll probably have a little extra. And what we're gonna do is let this cool down a little bit more until it's kind of almost all the way cooled. I don't want to wait until it's really hard. It's still usable at that point. It's just that what we're going for, since this is going to be the only coating on that table, I want it to absorb in a little more. This is the table that we put in probably a few weeks back. And so the wood dried a little more and there are a few kind of like splits in it. This is probably the worst one, but we're okay with it. It's not perfect. Um, I mean, it was a live tree. I'm pretty sure that he took down and had to, you know, mill. So. We're totally cool with it. I'm not worried that there's splits in it. We are going to put this sealant on now or finish as more appropriate term. That's about the consistency I'm looking for. So a little bit runny and we did put some on here and you can tell it makes the wood a little bit darker and you can't feel it, but it's quite a bit smoother than this. So I'm just going with the grain. And we have a lot of lighter wood in the house, so we decided to do no stain. This obviously makes it a little bit darker, but there's really cool natural stains online. You can use wine, coffee, tea, and you'll get a really nice color with just that. Okay, so that's the finished product. It's even more rich than I thought. It turned out awesome. It really amplified this darker pieces of the birch.
and it is totally 100% finished, completely natural. And may I point out too, it is also cheaper than buying like a sealant at the hardware store. So it's a great option too if you're doing like kids' toys or if you just want to save a buck. All right, so it's five o'clock and we're heading back into Wasilla. We're going to the generator shop. They fixed our generator, gave it a tune-up, got it running good, and they did that same day, so that's pretty awesome, good turnaround. And we thought we'd talk about how it's good, if you're living off-grid, to have two generators. We have a 2,000 watt that we use to power up our house when we're not getting solar, and then we also have a 3,800 watt, a bigger one, for powering our well and power tools, big vacuums, stuff like that. Um, and in situations like this, we've had both of our generators not be running at different times. It's good to have a backup one so you're not left without, in our case, running water or power. And another thing we've realized is this cold is extremely hard on our equipment, whether it's our chainsaws or generators or the truck. It just seems like everything has a really hard time when it gets this cold. And we're kind of considering what we're gonna do next year as far as a shed or a shelter for our, uh, you know, Polaris snowblower generators and stuff like that. Something to keep them out of the elements a little more and maybe keep them a little warmer and hopefully they run better and last longer for us. So, as you can tell, we got our generator back and she's running better than ever. And this is, I don't know if we've ever showed this, but this is how we actually plug our house in to the generator when we're not getting any solar. We just need, I just wanted to charge the house today to kind of make sure the generator was running all right. But it's just a regular plug that we wired into our inverter. And that goes there. The way they got it running was they did like a regular full tune-up spark plug and oil change. He cleaned up the ignition coil and I think that's kind of what did it for it and got it running again so we're good to have it back. We're going to stick it in the shed for the night and head inside. Okay, these are also a few things we picked up while we were in town today. We got tape and we got butcher paper and we got some extra bags for our vacuum sealer and a big bone saw. We're gonna be using all this stuff in a video coming up soon, so go ahead and take a guess if you think what we're gonna be using all this stuff for. We had two trips into town today, which is like an hour away, so that's not always ideal. Um, and we're making dinner. Eric's got beans, garlic and onions cooking there. We are making bean burgers, 